Hello and welcome back to Life of Posey. It's a perfect day to take your dog for a walk, but first let's go inside and I'm going to show you how to make an adorable leash for your dog. I always love putting old scraps or different pieces of material to use and making things that are scrappy. So come inside and I'm going to show you how to make a scrappy dog leash. So recently my mother gave me a bunch of her old leashes and collars that she no longer uses. She's had a lot of dogs in her life and these were collars and leashes that she doesn't use anymore. And I said I would definitely take them because you can reuse the hardware if you don't want to actually use the leash itself. Like this one is not something that I would use on Posey. And so um, I can take the hardware off of the end here and repurpose it. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in today's video. So I'm simply gonna take some scissors and cut this old leash off of this hardware. As simple as that. And now I have this perfect little leash buckle that is ready to go. This is the material that I'm going to work with today. This is a jelly roll and these are two and a half inches wide by about 42 inches long in length. But we're gonna cut them up to various lengths because we are gonna be putting together a scrappy leash. I just love the scrappy concept, so I'm excited to do this. But I think that all of these materials are really lovely. And the great thing about a jelly roll is that all of the pieces coordinate the colors all go together really well and they're fun patterns. Of course, you can take any scrap material you have on hand and cut them to two and a half inches wide by whatever length you want and do the same thing. But this is so easy because these strips are already two and a half inches wide. So let's get started. So what I'm going to do is take my material and I'm going to open it up and maybe even stack a few on top of each other but I'm going to lay them out and cut them nice and straight across at whatever length I desire. It can be only a few inches, it can be several inches, and I'm gonna switch it up. But I need in the end of this project for my leash with Miss Posey, I want my leash to be about a five to a six foot leash. But if you have a larger dog, you may want more length on your leash. It's just totally up to your preference. So I have these first two cut off and I'm gonna move those prints aside and pull over another print here. And maybe I'll just do one at a random length here. Just trying to keep my cuts pretty straight. So use your cutting board or your ruler to help you do that. And I want this one to be shorter. So I'm gonna come down here So because I want my leash to end at about five feet, I'm actually going to make my leash a, at least a foot longer to start with because we have to double over a handle and attach the, um, the little closure. So I'm going to aim to make this leash six feet long. And so I'm going to take whatever pieces I want. You're just going to want to make sure that different pieces are coming together each time. But what you will do is, for instance, these two pieces, I will take them to my sewing machine and I will put them good sides facing. So I will put this one face up and this one face down so that they are good sides facing. Line them up nice and straight and with a quarter inch seam allowance, stitch all the way across here. That way when I open it up, they are attached. And then I will move down the line and take another piece of material that is different from the previous one and put it face down on top of the good side of this one and stitch a quarter of an inch. And then I will open those up once they are attached and take another piece of material and do the same thing, face to face, quarter inch seam until I have one long piece of material. 
so I am going to head over to the sewing machine with all of my scraps and sew them together. All right, I'm back from the sewing machine, and as you can see, I have this long strip of scrappy material. I'm gonna show you right here that this is where I sewed the seams together, and then when I was all done, I went ahead and ironed all of the seams going one direction. It doesn't matter which way, but just so that they lay down flat. And when you turn it to the front, you have this nice continuous strip of material. So the next step is to turn this over and we're gonna bring it to our ironing board and we're going to iron on pieces of light to medium weight interfacing just to give this a little more stability. You do not have to do this, but if you want your leash to be a little bit more firm, this is what you would do. Here's a sheet of interfacing that I have on hand. And what I'm going to do is move my scrappy piece away and I'm going to lay this out and using a ruler, I'm gonna cut this in strips that are two and a half inches wide, maybe even just a hair less than two and a half inches. That way I can put it right on top of my strip of material here and not have any coming off the edges. So I'm just gonna continue to cut out just different strips that are about two and a half inches wide and then I will line those up and iron them on. When using interfacing, there's one side that you can visibly see the glue on and you can somewhat feel it. The other side is smooth. This side has a little bit more of a texture and you can kind of see the sheen of the glue that will actually adhere to your fabric. So we're gonna bring this over to our sewing machine and lay it across the strip right down the center with the glue side down right in the center of our strip. But be sure to start this strip about a half inch down from the end of our material. So if this is the edge of our material, the interfacing will start a half an inch away from that edge. So go ahead and iron your interfacing on following the instructions on your package of interfacing and continue to do this down the strip of your material, just grabbing more strips of your interfacing and laying it on the correct way and ironing it down. And when you get to the other end of your strip, be sure to stop half an inch from the edge as well. And make sure you're putting this on the back side of your material, not the good side. We want it on the back side. So I'm gonna go to my iron and do that and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back from the iron and I have attached all of my interfacing down the length of my material. But as I pointed out before, I was sure not to put it about a half an inch from both ends. So the next step is to lay this out and we're gonna flip it upside down like this at our ironing board. We're going to fold this in half and iron all the way down the length after we have it ironed in half, we'll have a little crease down here in the center. From there, we're gonna pull both of the side edges just before they meet that middle crease. So if my middle crease is right here, I will just leave a tiny little gap in between the two pieces like so. So almost touching, but not quite, and iron that. And then we will have it folded over completely like so. So go ahead and go to the iron, fold it in half, and then fold each sides up and to that middle point, leaving a little gap in between. I'm gonna go to my iron and do this and I'll be right back. Alrighty, I'm back from the ironing board and I have done exactly as I explained, in half to the center on both sides and over. So now I'm completely ironed into place and we're gonna head over to our sewing machine and I'll show you what to do from there. Sewing. Okay. Alrighty. Now that I'm at the sewing machine, I'm going to unfold this ironed edge that I previously did. Open it up right here at the end and fold it so that the good sides are facing, just like so. And right here where my interfacing ends, which is about a half an inch down from the raw edge, I'm going to stitch right across this edge. Thank you. 
so now that I have that stitched across, I can clip off these little strings. And now I am going to flip this to the good side again. And right here in the corner, use something to poke that corner out just like so. And then you can see we have a nice clean closed off edge here. And then I'm going to look inside here and these are the little seams. And instead of having them all go to one direction, I'm gonna open them up so they're flat inside of here, just like so. That way I can fold my material where this iron line is right under. Just push it all up in there use a little pokey item like the scissors or something like that to get them all to lay flat as you can see right here and then this all closes up really night nice and tidy just like so so now we're ready to start sewing i'm going to start probably right about here about an inch or so down because there's quite a bit of bulk right here and i find that when i start my seam where it's bulky it sometimes doesn't want to move forward a really good thing to have would be a walking foot I don't have a walking foot on my sewing machine you can purchase one but I'm gonna make do with what I have so I'm gonna start down about an inch and I'm going to stitch all the way down this edge and when I get to the bottom I'll go cut across and come back up the other edge until I get over to this point where I started so let's get started here I'm going to put this under my foot about an inch down and I'm going to sew with just about an eighth of an inch or less seam allowance. I just want my seam to be pretty close to the edge here and I'm going to use a stitch size of three because I think that makes it look a little nicer to have a bigger stitch as a finishing touch. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to back stitch a bit at the very beginning just to ensure that it doesn't come undone and continue down. Now remember, just go ahead and take your time if you're worried about your seam coming out nice and straight. Sometimes when we rush these things, it gets a little curvy. And remember to always have a little focal point. Don't look at your needle, look at some kind of marking on your machine. I have a little notch right here that I look at that helps me to keep pretty close to the seam allowance I'd like. When you get to the points where the material has been joined together, it is a little bulkier. So you may need to push your fabric through and pull a little bit on the other end and just go nice and slow until you get across. And just continue like this all the way around your leash. Before you get too far down to the very bottom edge, remember to do the same thing we did in the beginning. Open up your material, fold it good sides together, line up your edges, and stitch along that half inch seam allowance right where your interfacing ended. Be sure to back stitch at the beginning and end of the seam, especially the beginning, because you don't want the material to pull apart as you're tucking it under. And now we can continue sewing along the length and we have both ends tucked under nicely. I left off right about here, so I'm gonna lower my needle and back stitch a bit here, and then continue on down to the bottom. And at about a quarter or eighth of an inch from the end, I'm gonna leave my needle down, lift up my presser foot and swivel this around, lower my presser foot and come to this edge and do the same thing one more time and now I can continue to travel all the way up the length of the leash on this side. Okay, I'm coming up here on the very end. So I'm going to pivot around and pivot around again. And this was my starting point. So I'm going to just come right up to that starting point and backstitch 
And there it is. I'm done. I've stitched all the way around, top, all the way down, bottom, and all the way back. So now that we're done stitching this all together, we're gonna take our piece of hardware that we either purchased or are upcycling like I am from an old leash, and we're gonna string this leash through it. Now, this end piece here may be different on the buckle that you have or purchased because they come in different sizes. And you could always make this strap wider. That would just depend on the width of the straps that you, of the material that you cut. Ours were two and a half inch and ended up being about five eighths of an inch wide. So it's a little bit wider even than my buckle here, as you can see, but I'm not too concerned with that. I'm just gonna kind of push it through like so. And then I'm gonna leave myself plenty of room here at the bottom. Maybe that's a little much because I want to sew a sort of square or rectangular shape right here to make this really secure. And I don't want this metal buckle getting in the way of my presser foot. So give yourself plenty of room. Um, just gauge it by the size of your foot and what you think you need to be able to fit this little um, rectangular or square shape in. So I think I have enough here and I'm going to slip this under vertically first to make sure I can lower my presser foot and still be able to get the square shape sewn on there. And if not, go ahead and pull out a little more material. I think I'm okay right here. So I'm going to start on one edge and just start sewing downward and go down, around, up, and over, just like we are stitching on a square or a rectangle. Be sure to back stitch at the beginning and the end. Now this is a lot of material that we're sewing through, so just take your time and you might need to guide it through a bit and just get this next line even with where you started with before and then press her foot up, needle down, shift it around and come across and back stitch. And as you can see, I have it stitched all the way around. You could even put a little X through here with your sewing machine. Go ahead and stitch this way and this way if you're really concerned with making sure that this is super secure. I am totally confident that this is enough for my leash. So now this is totally secure. So now we'll go to the other end of my leash and we're gonna loop this over in order to make a handle. Now this is up to you how big you want your handle. If you have a really large hand and you want to make it extra big, go for it. If you have a smaller hand and you want this to be a little more small, the opening smaller. And then we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to stitch a little square here. And now my handle is secure. All right, guys, look at that. Isn't this adorable? I just think this scrappy leash turned out so lovely. I love all the fun coordinating materials and it would be just as fun with really random leftover materials. And I have my leash handle here, custom made to the size that I want. And I've upcycled this little piece of hardware here from an old leash and I've made a totally new leash. I think that this is such a fun, quick project. You could make several of these. You could gift them to friends. You could donate them to an animal shelter. I think it's just such a fun, quick little idea. And I hope that you will give it a try. I'm gonna take Miss Posey outside right now and try it out. Hello, Miss Posey. You wanna go for a walk? Let's go, come on. So I think that this turned out adorable. Come on, Posey. She's just happy to go for a walk. Come on. But as you can see, we have this adorable 
colorful leash and I think it just turned out lovely. Here's the handle. It's nice and secure, fits my wrist. I ended up making this leash a little bit longer than I had originally said. So be sure to keep in mind the length that you want. And I would add, I would say a good six inches extra for securing this buckle down here. And depending on the size of your wrist strap, mine is probably an extra 10 inches. So keep that in mind when you are figuring out about how much extra you need to add to the overall length. But I'm very pleased with it and I hope that you guys will give it a try. Have a great day.